I build a lot of computers here on my YouTube channel. That's kind of my theme, but I will be honest, sometimes I kind of throw them together. Uh, if I need to make a video on a build and the parts are relatively arbitrary, I will use what I have here on hand in the garage. But I have two systems that I'm planning right now, two builds coming soon, and I actually wanted to put a little bit more thought into them. So here's a video about me putting more thought into them and hopefully getting some feedback from you guys. Excellent. That's right, you guys, I'm taking a break from helping you guys build your PCs to allow you to help me build my PC. Uh, so help me out. Here are the two builds that I'm building, and both of these are inspired by a single component. I don't know if you guys ever have the same experience as well, but uh, this goes back quite some time. I'd say the one that stands out to me is the white build that Kyle and I did all the way back in the Newegg TV days, which was the very first ever white PC build. Like, no one had ever built a white computer before then, but for that one, we had this SSD that came in, a little 2.5 inch SSD from SK Hynix, which was all white and just a really nice, clean, white housing for a 2.5 inch SSD. And I was like, ah, this would be perfect for an all white build, and that's how it started. I'll put a link to that video down in the description, but for today, I have have two parts here. Each of them has inspired me to build a computer based on them. Starting with this one here, which I will do a brief unboxing of, because I actually haven't unboxed it. Un un I don't even know if that's called an unboxing, but geez, that's really... So this is an AMD Threadripper uh, 3 CPU from the 3000 series, sent directly uh, by AMD, and they sent it in th one of these. This is tray packaging for uh, CPUs like this, and I I'm not sure how, like if you had the full tray, I'm not sure how many it would actually hold. This one they sort of snapped off so they could fit uh, just a single 3970X in it. And I wanted to do this unboxing experience because uh, this is the CPU that AMD promised me uh, many, many months ago. They finally actually sent it to me many months ago already, and I've just been waiting around to do something with it. I'm very happy to be on good terms with AMD and Intel, and they have provided me a decent amount of CPU samples over the years. I just think it's really funny the different packaging that it arrives in from time to time. Like Intel, for the longest time, just sent it in these little black boxes, which is fine. These are anti-static and everything. But then AMD with Ryzen started sending out these reviewer kits where they had like fancy packaging and stuff that was made to be unboxed. Even with Threadripper, they did some of that. But then uh, if you're getting a CPU like months after the launch, and they they don't really care about the unboxing video anymore, uh, you get the broken off chunk of tray. But I'm not trying to complain at all, I'm, I'm just, I just think it's amusing. Uh, this is a AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3970X, 32 core, 64 thread, uh, currently goes for $1,853.37 on Amazon. And although I do not have a retail box like this, that's fine, because the CPU is all that really matters. And fortunately they did include the little carrier frame. So that is my first piece. I need to build a system using this processor and put it to use. And then over here we have the second item. This is a motherboard that arrived along with the various motherboard samples that arrived when all the B550 stuff was coming in. A lot of those are still over there behind me and I try to find good uses for them, but oftentimes I get sent multiple motherboards and I'm like, I, I can't, I don't have time to do anything with all these. This board, however, I want to do something with. It's Mini ITX, it's B550, so my idea was to build a nice, higher end, not like crazy high end, just don't care about price thing, but reasonably priced, probably in around the $2,000 range, mini ITX gaming PC, and I would do a full walkthrough build video and show you guys how I put it together and everything. Uh, and of course, the central piece of that is gonna be this motherboard, the Asus ROG Strix B550-i Gaming. There are a few scattered reviews up on this motherboard. I can tell you that the uh, response has mainly been positive to it. There was a little bit of a quibble about the power delivery configuration on this, especially if you compare it to the X570 version of the X570-i Gaming. That one should only be about 20 to $40 more than this one, so if you're concerned about high-end overclocking, then it's probably worth your while to get the X570 rather than the B550. But everything else about it is very positive. Uh, the layout, the look, uh, it's, it does have an active uh, chipset cooling fan, but that's only gonna spin uh, when the chipset actually needs cooling. You can kind of see it down here, but this actually has a feature that I really like in higher-end motherboards, which is LED lights in the audio connectors, the analog audio connectors. That's right down here, so like the green one is where you'd plug in your headphone jack and the red one is for the microphone, for example. So a good audio solution, uh, a nice layout,
layout when it comes to fan headers and RGB headers and everything. It's got a M.2 with a heat sink on the front for a PCIe 4.0. And then there's another M.2 slot on the back so you can do dual M.2 drives. It also has a USB 3.2 Gen 2 front panel header, uh, which is kind of rare on these boards. Now for B550, there are some other competing boards from like MSI and Gigabyte, uh, but these boards are really hard to find right now. I, I have found that the like B550 standard size boards are becoming a little bit easier to find, but the ITX boards are still a little bit difficult. So this one should be selling for $210. It's going for $230 right now, I think due to the limited availability. But after I received it, I was like, oh, that'd be a cool board to build a mini ITX system around. And then I did a little bit more research on it and I was like, yes, I feel like I have confirmed that this is a good board for that purpose. So I have two main questions about this build. And then I have two pretty important questions about the 3970X build. Let's start with the mini ITX system though. First, what case should I use? I don't know what to do there. Here's a quick look at a PC part picker list. And this is just sort of a, a rough out of the build. It's coming in at just shy of $2,000. And that is because I am including a full complement of storage here. We have a two terabyte SATA drive and a two terabyte NVMe drive. And that's not even taking up the PCIe Gen 4 slot. So you'll still have that available as an upgrade path. But for the time being, I'm planning for a 3700X uh, the motherboard, of course, a 16 gig memory kit, although I'm considering upping that to 32 gigs and maybe going with something slightly fancier that has RGB lighting. Of course, the storage with mini ITX, you don't necessarily always have a lot of expansion space for adding a mechanical hard drive, for example. So I wanted to make sure that right out of the gate, we had lots of storage. So four terabytes total across two SSDs. Since I was aiming for $2,000, that allowed me to fit in the $700 RTX 2080 Super. The only thing faster than this right now is the RTX 2080 Ti, but that's about 500 bucks more. And of course you could easily drop one of those in, but honestly, since I'm just planning this build out right now, there's a decent chance that the RTX 3000 series might be out and a viable option to drop in here as well, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Finally, we need a case and a power supply. The power supply has gotta be a SFX power supply and those are gonna be a little bit more expensive. You can still find a decent 650 watt 80 plus gold option for around 125 to $135. And then again, as a placeholder for the case, I have the Lian Li Li TU-150, which uh, actually is the case that I most recently built in when it comes to a mini ITX form factor. Uh, this is a nice little case. It's got a handle on top. I would gladly recommend it if you're interested in one, but I already built in it. So uh, I'm not gonna build in, in it again. I'm gonna build in a different case this time. The one I kind of spotted because it just recently launched and there's a few videos up on it here and there is the Cooler Master NR200, specifically the NR200P, which is available in a white or black finish. And I had the Amazon link where it was available yesterday and it's only $80. Is, is it the 80 or 90 dollars, although it's gone out of stock since then. You can check out the Cooler Master landing page on it if you want a little bit more detail. They have it set up with a water-cooled system in there. It's a very small case, very small, so you need an SFX power supply and there's limited space to work with, but they did this cool thing where it's got a frame on the inside and then all the side panels and top panel pieces pop off and everything, so that makes it a little bit easier to work with. And since it's uh, more reasonably priced at around 80 to 90 dollars, you know, it's not going to be a significant impact on the overall price of the build when put together. That said, this does not have the USB 3.2 Gen 2 front panel uh, connector, so that would be something that would sort of not match up with the motherboard and the case. And I know there are a bunch of mini ITX cases out there. There's sort of a niche of uh, smaller companies that make them that tend to be a little bit more on the expensive side, often like 200 to $300. I could opt for one of those, but please help me answer this first question and uh, leave me your feedback in the comment section down below. And let me know if you got any suggestions for cases. I'll take a look and let you guys know what I think. The second question is going to be cooling for this build. Uh, what I would normally lean towards right now is air cooling, simply because if I'm trying to stick to a budget, air cooling is going to be the more budget-friendly option. And also long-term, if you're planning to use the system, long-term, it's a little bit more peace of mind because you don't have to worry about something like a pump failing, for example. So second question is, do I go full air cooling on both the CPU and the GPU? Uh, do I do an air-cooled GPU with a water-cooled, uh, like all-in-one solution for the CPU? Or I could do a, an air-cooled solution to start, and then I could do like a water cooling upgrade to it down the line and maybe do a comparison between the two. Many options, of course, available to me there, but I desire your feedback. So so uh, leave me that down in the comment section. All right, so let's talk about the 3970X build. And this one, uh, I'm not gonna be as concerned about the price as I pitch it to people because I already have the CPU for one. And when you're talking about a much higher end system like this, there are so many different variables to throw in there that if I was trying to stick to a specific price or anything like that, it would make it more of a pain in the butt than I want it to be. Uh, that said, I have done a video on the 3970X and 3960X, but this was back when it launched in November of 2019. And you may or may not have, not have spotted it, but uh, Lyle, Lyle went and 
stole my CPUs and I still, I still haven't gotten them back. That's stupid, Lyle's a bastard, and as a result, have not done anything with Threadripper 3. Uh, I don't even have any TRX-40 chipset motherboards in the LGA 9000 socket or whatever the heck is on that TRX-40. AMD, fortunately, though, did make up for Lyle's malfeasance, however, and sent me the CPU, so I've got the starting out point for this new build. And uh, question number one is going to be a TRX-40 motherboard. It seems like stock is a little bit short for some of these as well, but TRX-40 motherboards, uh, they're expensive. Even the inexpensive ones are still expensive. The cheapest one available on Newegg right now is the Asus Prime TRX-40. That one's $417 and like around 500 bucks is kind of where these motherboards start out. But uh, we've got like the ASRock Tai Chi. Asus has a few models like a Strix model or they have of course the more updated variant of the Zenith, the Zenith 2 Extreme. That would be the highest end Asus option. Here is MSI's TRX40 creator board, which uh, looks pretty beastly there. Why is this Gigabyte board $1,450? I don't really understand that. I have a feeling this is because it's being sold by a third party seller. Oh yeah, Newegg sells it for $818. Ships from Israel, probably won't be going for that. Anyway though guys, there's uh, all the TRX40 boards, at least the ones that are currently available on Newegg, so I gotta make that choice first. Second question for this build is, what will I use the system for? Because uh, when I'm putting together something like this, I don't like to just be like, hey, here's this system I put together. I mean, I do that sometimes with some builds I put together, but for something that I'm putting more effort into, I wanna build it and then I wanna use it for something. I have a few use cases I could do here in my uh, office, home, studio, whatever you call this. The first would be to build a new uh, streaming and capture PC. My current streaming and capture PC is right here. It's actually being used to capture this video that I am currently recording. I've posted several videos on this uh, build in the past because uh, it sits over here by the back door and it tends to get kind of embarrassingly dusty and stuff. And at some point I went and uh, installed triple 4K capture cards in it. So it's a pretty capable setup. It's a pretty nice system. And overall, I don't have too much to complain about with it. Uh, those, there's a look at the Elgato 4K capture cards that I have in there. But I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this with the computer you put together, but it, it's it's got a troll. It's got a, a gremlin or something. It, it will every once in a while do a little system hang and I've done what I can to try to sort of troubleshoot that and figure out exactly what's causing it and I've kind of come up empty. Air cooling on both the CPU and the GPU. Uh, do I do an air cooled GPU with a water cooled uh, like all in one solution for the CPU or I could do a, an air cooled solution to start. It hasn't been the hugest issue so it's not something that's stopped me from using it or anything like that but at a certain point I was like you know what I can't figure out what's causing this so it's probably not going to go away until I just upgrade the system. The current system is based on an Intel 6950X which is a 10 core and an X99 motherboard not even X299 so it is getting a little bit older as well and look you can even still buy the 6950 on Newegg for 1,387 dollars. That's a deal. The second idea I have for the CPU is just to build a water-cooled 3970X gaming and workstation build and I said for poor people. And I say for poor people because uh, as I already mentioned when I'm parting out a system like this I'm usually not too concerned about the price but wouldn't it be interesting to take something like a $2,000 CPU and try to build a system out of it and make it water-cooled and actually try to be frugal about it like frugal sort of kind of. I don't know. So that was my second idea for it. And then my third idea has to do with Riptide. So I have a Riptide playlist. It is uh, the $10,000 PC, quote unquote, although I'm pretty sure it's not exactly $10,000. I think it ended up being a little bit more than that. I finished this build off two years ago and I most recently uh, updated it in this video about six months ago called Sometimes Water Cooling Sucks. It has dual loops for the CPU and GPU. It has a bunch of quick disconnects. I had weird issues with pumps failing and stuff like that. I had some uh, gunk and stuff starting to collect into the loop and I ended up basically reconfiguring the entire thing so now only the CPU is water cooled and I have an air cooled graphics card in there and it's functional for now but part of the reason why I had to do all this is because Riptide is my main workstation computer in my computer room and it also has my free NAS in the bottom so I could use the 3970X and a new T TRX40 motherboard to upgrade Riptide to be more current generation and then I would use it quite often. The follow-up video that I promised, which has apparently already been six months ago now, uh, was to sort of re-put the, the loop back together and get the radiators back in there and, and everything, but uh, I'm currently at a point now where I could do a sort of rebuild of that at the same time. There is a fourth option, which should be a Riptide upgrade 
but to not use the 1000D case anymore. The 1000D case is absolutely massive, uh, which makes it very difficult to transport. Uh, all of this work I've been needing to do on it here and there has not been the easiest because it's really something that I can't lift by myself, at least not without a bunch of preparation. Also, while it's very convenient to have the 32 terabyte NAS built into the bottom as, as shown here, it's also not in the best place if, for example, a leak were to happen with the pumps, which are all right above where all of the hard drives are. So practically speaking, it might make more sense to take my NAS and relocate it to a different case entirely. And then I could rebuild Riptide and still call it Riptide, but maybe a case that's just a little bit smaller. So that's my fourth option. And that is pretty much where I'm at right now. Again, this is a planning video. This is a speculative video. This is a video asking you guys for some feedback on what I'm gonna do next. These are all projects that I'm pretty excited for actually because I have a pretty practical use, well, at least for the 3970X and uh, this little mini ITX build. Uh, I have some ideas for where that could go to. I'm also somewhat looking forward to it being uh, August and now moving into like September, October because it might cool off a little bit. It hasn't been that hot this summer, um, but the fall is a really nice time to build PCs here in the garage because uh, the weather's nice too. That is all I have for this video though, you guys. Uh, I will put links to these parts and uh, some straw polls so you guys can give me some feedback uh, down in the video subscription below. And of course, give me your feedback down in the comment section. I will be going through there and reading them. And I'm very interested, especially if you guys have mini ITX case recommendations for me, because I know there's more out there than I'm even currently aware of. And I'd like to cast a little bit wider net when it comes to uh, which mini ITX cases I'm actually considering. Thank you very much for watching this video though. Uh, on your way out, check out my store at paulshardware.net where you can buy shirts, mugs, pint glasses and other sweet merchandise to help support my channel and get yourself sweet merch. Uh, of course, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you guys in the next one.